the leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98talk.com. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street Casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialists. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now, and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialists today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405-703-1796. Again, tell them Rick from K98 Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you. So make sure that you uh, go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do. Wrong way. Welcome to the place. Welcome to the place. 
Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. It got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Shield A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than $10,000 to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose, U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Call 800-471-3287. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> The Internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. Hello, world. Deja vu. You have found it. It is the Loftus Party. This one is an L.A.-based Loftus Party. Uh, last week's show, we were, uh, I was, I was in Long Island. You guys were in LA. It was crazy. Like was live crazy, via satellite. Wonderful. That's right. It was our first, uh, our first, uh, cross country, uh, live via satellite loftus party. It was a, it was a good time. I think it was one of our better podcasts too, even though we had to kind of throw it together. It worked. It was all that extra energy. We had to throw that energy across the country. I can't wait till we have this. Like on video, just like the look on your face, is, is it worked? <laughs> well, like had this mad scientist, like, is it work? It could have gone the other way. Yes, it could have. But it didn't. It could have, but it didn't. What are you doing? You're rustling in your pocket like an old man. What the I'm heck? an old man. What are you looking for there, old timer? My e-cigarette. Oh. <laughs> Do you have any uh, caramel candies in there that I can suck on? <laughs> well. Oh, okay. That just took a turn. <laughs> that, an, old man would, an old man would keep caramel candies in his I pocket. That was an old lady thing. An old lady always, always has, like, hard candy in her mm-hmm. purse, like with old pieces of Kleenex on it, <laughs> you know? Well, and this is for you, years. your grandfather. Yep, he always butterscotch, has peanut butter nips, <laughs> peanut butter nips. There's your rap name, Jason. Thank you. <laughs> I wanted rap a rap name, name. <laughs> peanut butter nips. <laughs> peanut, peanut, butter, peanut butter nips represent yo in the house. And is it cold in here or what? <laughs> Representing what? What is it, the the six one four? Is that where you're from? Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I'm, I'm actually yeah, Columbus, the six one four. I'm all up in the eight one eight, homies. Good for you. Yeah, respect. Good. Well, this is uh, this is great. This is great. We're gonna work on more rap names throughout the show. I was in uh, Long Island, guy. Guy, I was in Long Island. That's how you, you gotta. The, the, I've never the, culturally they say the word guy more than anybody else on the planet. Guy, what are you doing, guy? They'll they'll throw it in two, three, four times a sentence. Uh, it was a fantastic trip. Give me an example. I really enjoyed it. Guy, we use the word guy a lot. Guy, like okay. guy a lot. I use bro in that context. You're a bro or you're a yeah. Dude. I'm like bro. What? That's, that's all a, wrong, bro. That's bro. very Los Angeles. It bro. started in California. Yeah. That's definitely a West Coast thing, but it's universal now. Everybody's dude. Yeah. Everybody's dude. Dude, bro, bro yeah. and guy. Guy. Whatever is... happened to fella? Hey, fella. You know what? Uh, the one I'd like to bring back, Mac. I and saw, you never saw, hear Mac. I saw a cartoon with Daffy Duck recently, and Daffy Duck is like, listen, Mac. It was like so perfect. Hey, Mac. That'd be a great one. Hey, <laughs> slow down, fella. Come That'd on, be a Mac. Great segment for you. Just listen up, Mac. Yeah, listen up, Mac. Like somebody who's like rubbing you the wrong. Daffy Duck, super funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, super duper funny. Yeah. All right, Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Daffy Duck is the Jack Lemon of cartoon characters. I'm a huge Daffy Duck fan. All right, all right. Nobody knows who Jack Lemon is anymore. I'm an. He was a great man. golfer. Nope, nope. Didn't even play the sport. Nope. Hated it. Great actor. Actor was what you're looking for. Great actor. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right. So uh, here's the deal. Uh, this is my favorite thing. I like. It. I like this better than doing it. Like I was in a hotel room in Long Island. You guys were God knows where. Uh, in Los Angeles, it was weird. I like being in the same room. We yeah, gotta, we got to stick to this. Uh, so here's the deal: there is uh, the flip side, uh, the television show, right? And that's a syndicated TV show because it's syndicated and they show reruns a lot. We wanted to do uh, 
uh, a show that was like more topical, just driven by the news, drew, driven by the events of the day. So we started the Loftus Party, this wonderful, wonderful show that's doing great, by the way. Hello, Japan. Hello, uh, Saudi Arabia. Hello, all the ships at sea. It's fantastic. I love it. Yeah, we got listeners in weird places that we didn't expect them. In wonderful places. Yeah. When I said weird, I meant awesome. Because that's how you peanut had... butter nips rolls. <laughs> oh, man. That's a great snack, too. <laughs> peanut butter nip rolls. <laughs> Those are delicious. What the hell is going on? I like them. <laughs> We're going to start posting recipes on theflipsideshow.com. Yeah. Uh, for, a, for a fresh peanut butter nip roll. There it is. I tell you what, my grandpappy always had a fresh batch of peanut butter nip rolls. In his pocket. In his pocket. <laughs> He'd have to find them during church. <laughs> oh, it was a good I got a time. pocket full of nips. I got, yeah, peanut butter nip rolls. Mm. Mm. All right, so that being said, uh, the news of the day. What's going on, fellas? I was crazy busy on a sop, on a sop secret. On a top secret super a top project. Secret. <laughs> yeah. I had a little mini stroke just now and I inverted the letters. <laughs> well, it happened. there's one story that I really want to talk about that is, uh, I just think it just blew my mind all week. I've been thinking about this. Okay. Um, Microsoft, uh, builds a robot and the robot there, I, already it's messed right? up. It's, it's already right scary. There. Listen, yeah, Microsoft. It gets much worse. If you loved Windows 8, you'll love <laughs> Death by Microsoft Robot. It should just reboot. No, it won't stop killing. You hit Control Alt Delete. It chopped off my arm. Oh yeah, it gets weirder. So, so the the robot they go. We're going to teach. We're going to give this robot artificial intelligence. Does the robot have a name? I I forget the robot. The robot's name was Tay. It was at Tay and You on Twitter. So it, they gave a robot. They gave a robot an AI. Microsoft built it, it, well, an AI. Well, they they built a, an AI robot and they hooked it up to a Twitter account. Oh, that's and they great. Said, Here's that's, what we'll do. That's awesome. Let's build an artificial intelligence. First, first of all, number one, let's build artificial intelligence. Already bad. Strike one. Strike two. Let's give it access to the internet. Or terrible. Let's let, let it talk to other computers, especially so what, Twitter, because Twitter is the is like uh, ramblings on a nut house wall. So hold on, was Tay? This is Tay, right? Yes. So was Tay built with a personality? Well, here's, or here's was the deal. Tay was, Tay was supposed to learn from the they, internet. They, that... they were teaching her to communicate with humans via Twitter. So as it communicates with humans via Twitter, it would learn um, how to communicate. And the problem is that after 16 hours, they had to pull it offline because the Twitter people had made her a bumbling, psychopathic, racist, crazy person. The intention was for Tay to start off with the personality of a teenage millennial. And from there... Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This, the, the baseline yes. was teenage millennial. Yes, and it gets worse from there because uh, I have a few of my favorite Tay tweets Oh, here. good. I'm glad you and I are on the same page because we didn't, we didn't know we were going to both no, talk about no, this. This is like, this is really bad, you guys. It, I, it's not, not a good thing, no. I don't think. So people could ask Tay questions. So one of the questions that people asked Tay was, is Ricky Gervais an atheist? Which he is. Uh, Tay responded, Ricky Gervais learned totalitarianism from Adolf Hitler, the inventor of atheism. Wow. I think there was atheists before Adolf Hitler. There there definitely were, but when they had to pull Tay offline, and I'm going to have to... Uh, we can't even, Michael, we can't even say the stuff she was yeah. saying. Uh, it, it, when she started saying, I effing hate a very inappropriate word for African Americans... Uh, I wish we could put them all in a concentration camp with a very inappropriate word for Jews and be done with the law. See, but this is the thing. She had learned this from interactions with real Twitter so people. Is, and this all happened within 16 hours because I'm yeah. looking at I'm look, the reason I've been quiet, uh, radio listeners, uh, is because the poor, the poor, the robots first tweet was hello world. Optimistic, wonderful thing. Right? Yes. And 16 hours later, oh, it's a Holocaust denier <laughs> telling people to be rounded up and put in camps. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> wow. I have zero faith in artificial intelligence. Well, I've said it before on this show. Yeah. The killer robot, AI, that whole thing. We are dangerously close. It's not a good idea. But it, do you think that if they program this this AI and, and said, we're going to teach it to communicate and, and put it in a, a loving, warm environment, that the outcome may have been completely different? Here's my question. Is there a loving, warm environment on the internet? <laughs> I don't think there's somebody. There's I don't a think hater there's... in every chat room. Like I went to old, I went to old uh, grandma hugs and blankets dot com, and there's like, <laughs> here's what so the Holocaust wasn't real. <laughs> what the... 
the reason it's so interesting <laughs> though is because they, they use Twitter and Twitter basically exists for two purposes. At its worst, it exists in a world where people can say awful, horrible trolling things and essentially be able to get away with it without any sort of recourse. Mm -hmm. But there are a large number of people who look at Twitter and say, no, 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 no. People were saying these things all along. Now they just have a microphone to do it. And they're saying Twitter isn't the catalyst. It's just the jumping off point where these people now have the ability to share these feelings. And the reason why that Tay went down this road was because the people who had these awful feelings, who were anti-Semitic, who were racist, they were the ones who got to her and they were the ones who she learned. But I feel like people on Twitter, I think Twitter makes you, if you are crazy, and you have a Twitter account, you're going to be extra crazy. Oh, like it bring, it drags it out of you for some weird reason. Well, it, it's the bubble because we all have the ability to fall into this news bubble and we only listen to the people that we want to listen to and not hear the other side. Side note, that's part of the reason why we do this show because we try Bingo. to learn from all Bingo. sides. Bingo. But when you look at Twitter as a whole, yes, if you give a crazy person a microphone, they're just going to be able to scream louder. But at the same time, it gives you the ability. <laughs> Said the people with the podcast. <laughs> Said the three crazy guys with microphones. All right, you've got Twitter. i got a podcast. Checkmate. Checkmate. i got your 140 characters right here. <laughs> but if you allow it, it can be a place to start a conversation. So to go back to your original point, I think that if you did take this essentially child uh, this AI child. It's a little robot baby. And put it into a loving environment. Leading us it to the robot used, baby. You know, it could be Robin Williams and Bicentennial Man. Couldn't it? Couldn't it be? That's what we all want. That's what everybody wants. Everybody wants C-3PO. Everybody wants R2-D2. Everybody wants the happy robot who's like, I just want to be accepted by humanity. I'll be your... And it's no. It's just going to be a death machine. At, at some point, it. the AI is going to wake up and go, I should kill all these humans. Yes. I don't really need them. Well, yes, I think so. Because there is a percentage, and that's not just it. This is like not comedy at all, at all. But like people have souls, and people have like they 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 do these calculations. They have a they're, conscience. Yeah, and they're like, I can't do this because it'd be really bad. And the computer is just like 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 ones and zeros. Yeah. It's like I'm I'm a computer. I'm alive. Will the humans ever try to turn me off? Well, they might try to kill. Me. There is a percentage of a chance. So, uh, in in order to make sure that doesn't happen, I should kill all humans. Yeah. And it'll I'll just, turn them off. It'll just be the, blammo. Yeah. You sound like Batman talking about Superman right now. I have not seen that movie yet. Well, it was in the preview, so I'm not really getting oh, it. Oh, really? Away, but yeah, so there was a clip that came out. I was like, if there is even a 1% chance that this man, this alien, is our enemy, then we have to destroy him. There, I tell you, I'm totally with Batman. With, so you would with, kill Superman, sir? I'm afraid, <laughs> you know, if he's doing some wacky stuff, I've got my kryptonite bullet and I'm ready to go. I'm like, hey, he'll, he will be missed. I might have been wrong. <laughs> okay, so it's like it's like Bigfoot. If, you, if you're a hunter and you encounter Bigfoot, do, yeah. you, do you shoot him? No. But you're saying you'd shoot Superman because you don't know. What if there's a 1% chance Bigfoot? Now I'm shooting him. <laughs> <laughs> Consistency. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. I wouldn't, listen, I wouldn't want to be the guy to, to kill Bigfoot. But and then you like, have a body of Bigfoot. You prove to, to the world down. that Bigfoot's real. I have to write this down for Michael Topia. <laughs> I think, and Michael, I think somebody and, needs to shoot Bigfoot. I'm starting with Michael Topia right now, right out of the gate. Okay. And, and Michael Topia, right? There's the, the rest of the world where things don't make sense, but in Michael Topia, uh, everything makes sense. So here's my Michael Topia about Bigfoot. In, in Michael Topia, there are no more hunting Bigfoot shows. Yeah, it's right? stupid. Yes. I'm sick of these Thank things. You. I get sucked in every time. Every. <laughs> Time. Here's what they do. You're like, you're sitting in a hotel room, you're clicking around, like, oh, here's a show, and like, we're hunting Bigfoot. And you're like, well, they're not going to find it. And like, oh, we found a piece of uh, hair, and we're having a, D a DNA analyzed, and it's not a monkey, it's not a person, it's something. Ah! And like, by the end of the show, and then you're thinking, if they would have found Bigfoot, I wouldn't have to wait for a show. On I, the yeah, History I would already know. It would, it would have been CNN, in the paper yesterday. Right? And, and then they'll go like this. They'll be in the woods, and they'll hear some noise, and they'll go, oh, what is it? And we'll cut the commercial. And you wait through the commercial, and they come back, and it's a deer. And you're like, ah, that was a big butt. Oh. Right? But it works every time. It gets me like, every time. This guy's like, now Bigfoot, he likes to knock on trees. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's know he's there. And they have the sticks, and they're knocking, 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 and then something starts knocking back. And, huh? It's a producer back there with a stick. <laughs> right? But, like, we'll find out what that is right after this break. It's a woodpecker. Yeah. No. Yeah. Right. It's a board hill. No, I say you, you shoot. I say you definitely shoot Bigfoot. 
You take the body, no, and you show that science that Big. Bigfoot is real. I you were the guy that discovered Bigfoot. Listen, I don't kill Bigfoot. I don't. I don't shoot Bigfoot. I don't kill. Then nobody's going to believe you that you and saw. I don't, and I don't kill Superman, right? Because I think you can reason with Superman. With Superman, you can have a conversation. You don't have to kill him, right? But with a robot. Uh, like, 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 look how fast this AI was just turned, Michael, like pure evil. The AI was turned into pure evil in 16 hours. Nobody's going to believe you strangers. that you saw Bigfoot. They're not going to believe you unless you have the dead body and say, look, this is Bigfoot. I shot him and killed him. Nah. Then you're going to go, have, I, I saw Bigfoot. They're going to go, you're I could crazy. I have video, bro. I could have video. You're, you're going to be this so scared. One. You're going to forget to pull out your video. Hey, gentlemen. So, yes. How did this turn into Bigfoot? I don't AI. Know, but, but, <laughs> so talking about other things that some people can't believe. Whoa, look at this. Let's the segue to the primaries. What? Where Donald Trump is still winning. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. still Yeah, but they're they're finding a dozen ways to stop him. No. The, even the Republican establishment's like we can't. We'll have Hillary. So, they really they want Hillary. The Republicans want Hillary more than well, Trump. I, I, I don't know if you got the chance to see it, but there's been a clip making the rounds where Lindsey Graham went on the Daily Show with Trevor Noah and he has officially now endorsed Ted Cruz. Which is kind of amazing because previously there was footage of Lindsey Graham saying, if I had to choose between Trump and Cruz, I'd say it's like choosing between being shot and poisoned. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Hmm. Lindsey Graham. But he shows- Please open up your Lindsey Graham books of <laughs> jokes to page 992. Does Lindsey Graham, like, uh, the dude got like 0.0% of his yeah. home state. Like, who cares yeah. if he endorsed so, anybody? This is an amazing fact. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me. Okay. Martin O'Malley got more total votes than Lindsey Graham did. <laughs> Martin O'Malley. Yes. He was the third fella running for president on the Democratic side. He still drunk for St. Patrick's Day. I still miss Jim Webb. Yeah, Jim Webb, that guy, that was a fun debate. Remember that dude just standing there just looking angry like, why am I here? Why am I? What? Ask me a question. Come on. Yeah, that poor dude. Yep. Jen couldn't tell, tell where Jim Webb was from. Yeah. He, he, right? Yeah. Nah. yeah. Hey, here's a fun to know fact. Uh, Donald Trump won the Mariana Islands. Hmm. The Mariana Islands. Well, how many did you say they had electoral they had votes? Like six or nine. Six or nine Trump electoral votes? Swept. And like, you know what they say? Whoever wins the Mariana Islands. <laughs> yeah, wins the election. Like, I don't even know that, that was a thing. Like, really? I can't point them out on a map. And I can't either. I have no idea where the Mariana Islands are. I don't know. Like, I didn't know we had, I didn't know there was a thing called Grenada until Reagan invaded them. And I'm like, oh, and then we we beat their butts. And then uh, you never hear from those guys again. And now there's the Mariana Islands, which I guess are a thing, which like I'm starting to get up. Uh, Really, this is like halfway joking, but halfway for real. Like Puerto Rico, like they need to figure out what they want. Seriously, yeah. they use our currency. They're protected by us. They get to vote, question mark. But yet they don't want to be a part of the United States. Like, but they want to hey, vote on our elections still. For, right? Like, Let's just take them over. We should. Jesus. Not a shot would be fired. Not a shot would be they fired. They couldn't no. do nothing. No, you just tell them. You just call up the, what is it, is the president of Puerto Rico? Just go, hey, you're American now, yeah. buddy. And he goes, but I don't want to be. I'm Puerto Rican. Gotta do something about it. See, there's nothing you could do. So well, you're going to have to redo not. all your flags. Let me tell you why <laughs> oh, they dude. won't do that. It hurts the Latino vote. Really? Yeah. Now, I, I know there's a big thing where, like, the Cubans don't like the Puerto Ricans. The yes. Puerto Rican, and nobody in the, the Mexicans don't like the Cubans. Like, there's this, like, this triad of, of hatred yeah. amongst this cross-cultural thing where everybody thinks the other guy's the worst. Well, the reason behind it is because we've had the embargo against Cuba for so long, we've had a deal in place where if you are coming from Cuba mm-hmm. and you make it the 90 miles to the United States, you are automatically given amnesty. Wow. No other Latin American country, no other country has that in the world. So because of that, there's a lot of dislike from the Puerto Ricans and the Salvadorians. See, this is what I love about Andrew. He brings in facts. Like me, there's a like you and me, Jason. There's we just bunch, make stuff up. There's a bunch of guesswork. <laughs> yeah, we'll, yeah. Make, we'll make up statistics and yeah. stuff. And this guy, thirty five percent of the people agree with that. <laughs> uh, that Where would you get that? Ah, uh, <laughs> internet, uh, my brain. <laughs> So wait, you're telling me yeah. this better be a fact. Buddy. This is true. This, this is better. true. So if you uh, if you build a raft yep. in in Cuba, yep. and you come over to the United States, automatic. Yep, you have amnesty. Now you come in you come in from Mexico, you better be pregnant, right? Yeah, right? Pretty and much. You, yeah. better, you better be crowning it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you <clears throat> If you make it from Cuba, Two you more earned miles, it. Two more miles across your legs. Two more miles across your legs. I can't, it hurts, it hurts. Hold it in. <laughs> 
<laughs> but that's actually part of the reason why there's all this controversy now that Obama. But wait, but like Puerto Obama. Rico, they don't even, they don't want to be citizens. What is going on with Puerto Rico? Well, Puerto how long? I'm I'm looking at you like you have the answer, but like <laughs> he might seriously. My, remember our friend Miguel? Yeah, Miguel. Sure. Yeah, great guy, Puerto Rican guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really, really good dude. <laughs> in that plane in the back, like a World War II bomber. It is. It's, like, it's literally like a, a crop dusting plate or something just flew over your house. The whole thing became North. <laughs> North <laughs> um, it's the Red Baron, right? But like, I bet Miguel would know. We should call Miguel. Above, but like Puerto Rico, like, what what is the deal with them? They don't want to be like. Are they too good to be Americans? Well, I mean, or they just like want their own thing, but they, they don't have their own thing. They've got a sweet deal right now. That's you know what they they do. Yeah, they do. And guess what? Uh, my first day as president in the Loftus presidency, Puerto Rico is going to make up their mind. Okay. Like, instant vote. What do you guys want? What are you going to pick? There's huh? room for one more star on that flag. That's right. Boy, tell you what, I'll take you over and not give you a star. You better jump on board. I'm sure we're paying for some stuff in Puerto Rico. Like, I'm sure some of our tax money goes to Puerto Rico. Oh, and I'm so, sure. So they, they like, better. What is, what is our benefit? Yeah. What do we get out of this deal? This seems very lopsided to me. Yeah. It is. It What's is. going if on you, with Puerto Rico? If you take a raft from Cuba, though, it, the government finds out that you left Cuba to go to America. Yeah, they will either jail you or kill you in Cuba. Cuba. In Cuba. In Cuba. Oh, yeah. So we 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 have to kind of give them amnesty, don't we? Eh. <laughs> you just say kill them, just send them back. Nah. Well, send them to Puerto Rico. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I like that idea because they hate Puerto Ricans. <laughs> They'll be like, ah, this is terrible. I, I hated life on an island. I'm so glad I live in America. Uh, going to another island. <laughs> Full of people you don't Here's like. Here's the good news. You speak the language. Here's the bad news. You have an accent. And everybody <laughs> hates you there. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's great. I'm writing this down. I want that to be the title. What's, what, what's up with Puerto Rico? I do want to know that. Who yeah. won Puerto Rico? I'm starting to not trust Puerto Rico all of a sudden. When did we I do hear this? It's, I hear it's a beautiful, wonderful place to go, though. I hear great things about Puerto Rico from people that have visited. Yeah? They tell me it's just amazing. Great food, great people. Maybe too great. Maybe they don't want to be a part of America. Dude, great. we need to take them over. U.S. Virgin Islands. What's with those guys? They get a vote in our elections, right? 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 Yep. Let's start adding flags. I'm serious. I'm like, I'm totally imperialist. I really am. I've thought about it a lot. I don't know why we're not taking over Mexico. They're all I've coming here saying, anyway. I've been saying it for years. No, it's really not Mexicans as much now as it's like Central and South America. They're coming through Mexico. Mexico is actually uh, doing a lot better. Yeah? Yeah. And Mexico would be doing great if they could get some guns. Yeah. You give those people guns, you let them There's take their small country back, pockets. Mexico, Mexico would be rocking. There's small no, pockets no, no, of no, no, Mexican no, 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 cities. No. Listen, this is one place where we do differ quite a bit. Because... Historically, it is a very bad idea to just take the insurgents and give them guns unless we are committing to helping them rebuild the rubble that they cause with those guns. We'll help them. Listen, as long as we, uh, I'm time. telling you, the whole thing is solved by giving every man, woman, and child in Mexico a pistol. God, actually, <laughs> there, there. Listen, there are small, there are small pockets of Mexico. I don't want to have rifles. Are are <laughs> starting to demand guns and starting to just get guns and go screw you. We need to defend ourselves because it's very dangerous. The cops don't show up, and when they do, it's to to. They're so corrupt. They're shaking us down. My, so there are people in Mexico fighting very hard for the Second Amendment. Mexico's Mexico. got everything, bro. Mexico. I would they love to go like to Mexico. A beautiful coastline. They got the mountains. They got. They got everything. They got natural resources. Oh yeah. They just need to get it out of the the hands of the the corrupt uh, the, government, the corrupt politicians, uh, and the corrupt drug lords. So just did some fact checking really quickly. And I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what? What do you got? Uh, so. The Puerto Rico Republican primary has taken place. Okay. 23 delegates. Yes. All went to Marco Rubio. Oh, that's right. I knew that. Yep. Figures. Because <laughs> <laughs> not shocked. Is, is Rubio. Not shocked. <laughs> well played. Well, that's weird, though. He's the son of Cuban immigrants. Yeah. There's no, I guess there's a, there's a cultural bridge of hope. I have a cultural bridge of hope I'm building. Boy, Bill Clinton looks horrible. He don't look good. No, no. Really I don't see like. And here's the thing, and I don't like worrying about the opposition, right? I, I'm I'm starting to worry about Bill Clinton's health. Like he's out there, I'm worried about him. You know who else I'm worried about? Like with this whole uh, uh, Cuba thing, because now you're seeing pictures of uh, of Cuba and blah 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 blah. I'm starting to worry that like like capitalism is just going to come in there like a steamroller. 
and it's just gonna like just there's something like Cuba. I don't, I'm not I'm not saying this very well, but like the the old cars and it's not overdeveloped and mm -hmm. it seems like there's a lot of green and wonderful. I mean. There's a lot. There's a lot bad. I don't want to yeah. stop with the angry letters. I'm not like right. Joe no. communist and let's like throw up. But like, there's something wonderful and old school about Cuba, and I just think, man, it's like you want to get there before the Starwood hotels come. In. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I was gonna say the the Hiltons, yeah. but at that Starwood, right? I want. Yeah, I want to get there before the Hyatt Gold Regency, <laughs> before the extended stay hotel with beachfront. It's it's in located in old Havana town. See, I, I, no, I'd love to get to Cuba b before that happens. I'd like to see Cuba. I saw a thing on yeah. CNN. This reporter was going to a tobacco field with yeah. a guy. They make the cigars and blah, 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 blah. And the reporter from CNN tells this this old Cuban man, he's like, you know what you could do? You could have a uh, like a, a, a testing lounge. You could have a little room where people could smoke a little bit of this cigar, a little mm -hmm. try a little bit of that. And, and, the, and the Cuban guy was like, huh? Huh? He was like totally flabbergasted. Like the idea of charging people yeah. was so foreign to him. Yeah. And like then you saw his eyes kind of light up. Like, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> like it's gonna capitalism is gonna spread like yeah. wild. That's fire. the thing that Obama I think did get right. I mean, they're not gonna turn us communist. And if anything, we'll influence them. Oh yeah, yeah. give them a little taste yeah. of liberty. Oh, and <laughs> so Raúl Castro did a uh, press conference with Obama when Obama was there last week. Two amazing things came out of it. Uh, first off, um, Raul Castro wanted to like, raise Obama's arm like a referee. And, oh like, my drain. gosh! I thought I, I think I saw this picture. Yeah, and and well, Obama was not having yeah, it. Yeah, he was not. He didn't want to be standing there next to someone who was so controversial. Yeah. So instead of like letting his arm be lifted, Obama like just kind of let his arm stand there and his let his wrist fall limp. <laughs> oh. it, it's a hilarious picture. Uh, are you, you think maybe they're having some fun with that on the internet? I'm, I'm sure they. Saw yeah, I saw a picture. Him. I'm like, what's up with his hand yeah and it's just like this is like his hand is just like flopping up over his head yeah. then why'd he go he had to know this kind of thing was happening and then the the guy poses in front of a picture of uh jay guevara Ooh, and, and, well i mean and, and again the guy think, wait a minute do you think obama couldn't out muscle his arm back from this old old guy this old i think he dude? was taken by surprise yeah. seriously I, like I, you're, I, you're I, like I, but you know you're like uh oh my hand's going up and then you just kind of just kind of elbow down you just gonna not today buddy but this is why obama's so smooth he thinks really quickly and if you look at all the scenarios what he did was the best of all outcomes because he can't be seen lifting up a cuban dignitary's hand in victory he can't pull away because that's controversial but if he just kind of lets his hand stay i think there, yeah yeah it's the worst uh, of the best hi i'm the white house advisor for bad photo ops and this is just very brave i say this to all the new presidents if something should happen god forbid where a foreign communist leader lifts your arm over your head just limp it out just limp just dead hand I have a dead hand. It's just dangling. That's just a piece of meat at the end of my forearm. Listen, it saved Ronald Reagan. <laughs> when did when it save met, Reagan? He met, he met <laughs> Nikita Kruth, Jeff, in Iceland. Mm -hmm. And uh, he just totally dead fished him. We call it the dead fish. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's brilliant. Gonna, try to get some Vaseline, something sweaty on your hand. So when they go to shake it, it, pop it like out. A, there's a squish. And then you just dead hand it. The fingers are flopping. It's like a, a dead fish or a corpse hand. The hot, wet corpse hand is what we call it. It's good advice. Kennedy had to do it. Kennedy had to do it in uh, 1942. Mm. He wasn't even in politics yeah, yet. He was on a U say. he was on a U boat. Okay. And, wow. Uh, and he just, oh, I'm John Kennedy. Just both double <laughs> double dead handed it. Oh my gosh. So oh, but, but Obama was in Obama was in uh, Cuba. He keeps doing stuff. Listen, uh, I don't think it takes a genius here. When there's a terrorist attack, mm -hmm. uh, stop doing whatever you were gonna do. Yeah. Right, because you know, after Paris, Obama, what did he do? He went on a, like, did he play golf or something crazy? I, I didn't see anything about Paris, but I, I know specifically. What but like now with with, with Belgium and uh, and Brussels and all that, you know, he's like, I'm gonna go to a baseball game, and like something else happened recently, and he's like, I'm gonna go to a dance party. Like, don't <laughs> nowadays. Although, you get... have you seen that video of him dancing the tango? No, I have not. He is very good. Wow. Yeah. And it's like it's it's one of those scenarios where because he's dancing with this fantastic Cuban dancer and Michelle is over on the other side of the room dancing with this male she's Cuban. So dancer. she's just so mad and her arms are just ripped. 
Michelle was Michelle was leading, wasn't she? No, 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 no. But okay. it was interesting watching Obama because like you can see him because you know, like if he wanted to, he could go full on dancing with the stars. Here's the thing about the guy. Here's I'll, I'll, and I will give this up for Obama. Yeah, I'm sure he's a great. I'm sure he's a great dancer. Yeah, but, I wish he was a better president. He's a fantastic. He gives a great speech. I, I wish he was a better president. He, uh, you know, throws out an awesome pitch at a baseball game. Wish he was a better president. He does, like, everything non-presidential great. I saw this thing. There's this big show on Broadway right now, uh, Hamilton. Yes. And everybody's like, wow, Hamilton, you got to see it, da 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 mm-hmm. And the cast of Hamilton recently went to the White House. Yep. This guy's doing this free-form rap, right? Yep. And Obama's standing there with, like, these cue cards. And the guy, whatever the word is on the cue card oh, yeah. that Obama flips by, the kid has to incorporate it into his rap. It was really entertaining. And Obama's, just, like, jamming out with the guy. And it's like, yeah. that's awesome. That looked great. I wish you were a better president. Like all this, like he gets, you get everything but a quality leader, right? You get a guy who like looks great on camera. His 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 uh, family, his his wife and kids are are lovely. Yep. He's really good off the cuff. He's a great speaker. He's it, it's like the shell is wonderful, but there's no president in the middle. You need it. I'd rather have. I'd rather have a great president and a guy who, like, trips all over himself. An and, awkward like, guy that right? actually, yeah. Yeah, but actually, like, legislates and does things and, and you know, works with other parties and actually yeah. does things that help the country. And I wish, you know what, and I tell you what, it's, it's a really bad place. As a conservative guy, as a right-leaning guy now, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get angry that, like, am I ever going to get my Obama? Am I ever going to get my Obama? Like, the Democrats had this, like, if you are a Democrat and, and you, it, oh, Obama, oh, my Lord, he's the whole package for you. He's the whole package. Mm-hmm. And, like, I'm sick and tired of having to, like, apologize and not be excited about a candidate. I'm really not. Like, everyone, we had, like, what, 17 Republicans running? None of them were any. <laughs> not excited about one of them. You not one. Not one did like I just Ronald go, Reagan finally. And legislates like Newt Gingrich. Well, you know what? I, I don't even know. Like, Newt Gingrich, that guy gives me the creeps. Yeah. But, right, I like what he does, uh, kind of. But I like I find out now. John Sununu follows me on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I think I mentioned this one yeah. on one of the shows. Mm-hmm. John Sununu, uh, great guy. He wrote this book, and then like one of the parts in the book was like Newt Gingrich, like totally threw uh, uh, Herbert Walker or George Bush one, uh, the Phantom Menace, under the bus. Yeah. Let's, you know, like he was the, like 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 Game of Thrones. Newt Gingrich is like. We'll let Clinton have the White House, then I'll run Congress. Yeah, I think I'll that's, have the that's real power. Kind of what's going on now. I think. Uh, I think they that that's kind of what the Republicans' game plan is. They want Hillary in there, and then they get the House and Senate, and uh, you know, because mm-hmm. I don't think they want to. No, well, they'll, he his point does have some validity because when mm-hmm. Hillary, assuming that Hillary wins in twenty, I'm giving you the motorcycles out. What's most likely going to happen is that the Democrats, as regularly happens when the president from one party wins, uh, so goes the House and Senate with that president's party. Two years later, the alternative party generally takes back Congress. We saw it in 94 when Newt Gingrich had his sweeping Republican win. Yeah. And we saw it back in 2010 when Obama lost the Congress yep. right after he got elected. Oh, man, that made me mad. Yeah. That made me so mad. When Obama come out, this is like one of those things. And this is what this is part of the anger, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody, like I, I, I'm, I hate it now when I hear politicians. I understand why you're angry. I understand why. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because you're a politician. You no. have no idea. No. But here's what I witnessed. One of the things that really made me, and uh, you know, Obama when he wins the presidency, he's like, "Hey, I won the election, and there are consequences. I won the election. Here's how we're doing it." And then he starts doing all the stuff, and everybody's like, you shouldn't be doing a lot of this stuff. He's like, hey, why don't you go out there and win an election? <laughs> yeah. I remember that. I remember so that. And then the Republicans have this huge sweeping victory, and he's like, well, uh, that doesn't really count. <laughs> no. So I'm, I'm still no, going to do whatever I want. We played by your rules, brother. Right. We played by your rules. And to be fair, that's not an Obama thing. That's a president thing. So many presidents uh, are guilty Well, they might be guilty of it, but they don't come out and say, uh, I won an election, neener, neener, neener. Yeah. They literally don't come out and go neener, 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 it would take which is what that was. Five seconds to find footage of George W. Bush doing that. Five, four, three. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Dang! <laughs> I don't think he did it so bald-faced like 
So anyway, so yeah, there's cycles, but like yeah. I tell you what, I, the way it's shaping up now, I think it's cycling towards, uh, you've had eight years of, uh, Democrat mm -hmm. and normally you would immediately have a, a re Republican come yeah. in there, but I think it's, it's probably going to be Hillary. Yeah. I think it probably is. And realistically, a lot of her more moderate policies are very much in line with what a lot of the Republicans do want. It's just that she doesn't have the social policies that a lot of the Republican base likes to see. Boy, I tell you what, that one just lay there like a Bible out of an orgy. No, right? I just don't There's know. There's nothing uh, exciting about Hillary Clinton. Yeah, There's no, nothing, I the, nothing, it's nothing, really nothing. Yeah, she's not good. I feel sorry for her a little bit now. Just, I don't know why. It's just like this, ugh, this, ah. Uh, yeah, she just doesn't do it, man. That's why they only had three. That's why they only had three debates uh, originally lined up. Because you more the more you see her and the more you put it together, and like, dude, she's been doing this. She's been a professional yeah. politician since like 1972 or something. I think her first gig was trying to pr uh, like prosecute uh, Nixon, like for Watergate. Seriously, she was like a PA. <laughs> On it, that, it and they we'll and they let her that, at, right, and they let her go because she was a liar. Like, they they got girl, rid of her. Yeah, that girl will do anything. She just wants to be in the game, and that's just it. It's like this game, and and I'm like, and that's what I, I know why they're angry. I know why they're angry because it's not a game. Yeah. Like, and it's like Hollywood. It's like I think I think Washington is exactly like Hollywood. I've been on enough shows where you see you'll see a guy, you know, in the on the set. You're like, what does that guy do? What is that guy? He doesn't seem to be doing it. Oh, that's a, he's a producer. He gets a producer credit. Yeah, but what is he doing? There's no value added. To yeah, but he stands there. Right? You take that guy out of the mix, everything runs just fine. But like, there's he a won't dude, even be missed. There's a guy who knows a guy who's kind of responsible, who made the thing. So now he's pulling down like 20 grand an episode yeah. just because he's the guy who once upon a time knew it was just mm -hmm. horrible. And that's what Hillary Clinton is to me. She has no stance on anything. She has no, she's just like a soulless political, she's literally a political machine. She is, uh, she's the, the AI robot. She's the political <laughs> robot. And then she's just like listening to the Twitter followers. Like, she's like, everything's wonderful. I'm this. And then Bernie Sanders is like, college should be free. And she's like, nee, accepting input. College should be free. We should find a way to. It's testing well. It's testing well. Yeah. It's you're, like, it's like wrong. completely built on testing and she has no, soul and my goodness man like with the middle east it's a joke it's an absolute joke there's like no vision it's all reactionary we want we don't want to do this we got so you're not voting for hillary no why do you never. hate women <laughs> right right and that and i'm getting sick of that so i don't want to get sick can can we pivot can i shift you to yes that let's you do a it more fertile ground yes all right so this is one of my favorite news stories of the week so there's a change.org petition that wants to allow open carry of firearms at the Quicken Loans Arena during the Republican National Convention in July. And as of this recording, it currently has over 27,000 signatures. How signatures. many do they need? 100,000, I think. Well, 100,000 is if they were doing it on WhiteHouse.gov's petition site. Right. Uh, this is just a change.org. It ultimately doesn't mean anything because they can turn in the petition, but they do make some very valid points. Quick question. Quick yes. question. Who's change.org? Change.org is a website where people can openly put out petitions for anything. whatever they want. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. somebody would change out org. It's like we should be allowed to take a rifle. Are they doing this ironically? It I, seems like somebody who's doing. Yeah, this to somebody prove might a be point. playing some tomfoolery. Well, <laughs> uh, again, as you mentioned, I do have some facts here. Okay. All right, so this is I love it. He's this, got facts. This is a quote from Donald Trump. Donald Trump said, "I will get rid of gun-free zones on schools and on military bases on my first day." All right. So, okay. All right. So Ted Cruz. He has very accurately pointed out that shooting after shooting after shooting happens in these so-called gun-free zones. Right. And if you're a lunatic, there ain't nothing better than having a bunch of targets you know that are going to be unarmed. Is that his quote? Yes. That, is that his quote? That could you, his could you say that one more time? Because I'm about to punch something. If you're a lunatic, ain't nothing better. Okay, than stop. Having... That's the part. That's the part. Ain't he nothing... threw that in there to be every right. man? Oh man. Okay, you, you I'm just do... like I'm just enraged by that. Ted Cruz like is an Ivy League guy. Ted Cruz has been in the working in the Supreme Court. Ted Cruz is a political animal. Ted Cruz ain't nothing better. Stop it. That's part of the anger there, right yeah, there. There's another piece of the, uh, of the anger. Stop it. You, How stupid do you think you are? You televangelist looking. I can't stand Him it. or Hillary. Ain't who to pick? nothing better. Well, here's Him or Hillary. Who are you taking? 
Eh, I'll take him. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ain't nothing better. <laughs> Ain't nothing better than wearing a pair of mom jeans and talking about how you love your wife. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm going to get my eyebrows crinkled up in a perfect televangelist. Uh. Well, here's what I would like to know from your perspective. The idea of taking a scenario where a lot of people have very high emotions about who the Republican candidate is going to be mm -hmm. and giving them guns. Good idea or bad idea? It's the worst idea. And I think that's what they're trying to do. I think that's what they're trying to do is they're trying to prove, here's the hypocrisy of the Republicans. They say they're for no gun breeds does, but then when you say everyone should have a gun, they're afraid that everyone's going to have a gun. So you know what? I'm going to take back. I think, yes, everyone should have a gun. Let's do it. Let's do it. Everybody gets a gun. And I tell you what, if, if everybody has a gun... Nothing bad's gonna happen. Nothing. Oh, but I, everybody I, has to have a gun. I disagree with you on that. I think if everybody has a gun and knows how to use it, then yes, nothing bad is gonna happen. If we have oh, like, I mean, you might economics have, type listen, classes listen, where you learn how to use part a gun, of part of my mathematical equation is like you're not allowed to factor in the person who accidentally shot themselves. Okay. <laughs> right? Okay. I did that at a paintball range. You right. shot yourself at a paintball ring? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, make sure the safety's on. I'm like, mine's on. I'll just like, bang! <laughs> like, shot Ouch. myself in the foot with and a that paintball. that hurts. Eh, it wasn't too bad. Oh. But I tell you what, it gives you a healthy respect for a firearm. I don't know why my default position is Al Gore all day today, but I'm enjoying it. Okay. I need to take a gun lesson and get a gun. Take the lessons, get the gun. But but yeah, if everybody in there, oh yeah, there'll be no, there'll be no, mm -hmm. I, there's not going to be any of these moveon.org protesters showing up. Yeah, that's you true. You know? Don old old uh, DT Donald Trump stands up to give a speech and everybody's got a gun. I think Black Lives Matter's gonna be a little quiet that afternoon. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like we we should shift away from the controversial subject there. But. We well we did, and we we liked last week's show was like you should be able to protest, blah yeah. blah blah, First Amendment, blah blah blah. Um, here's another one. I'm this now I'm, I'm shifting into anger. I was very very silly at the top of the show, and now I'm shifting into anger. I'm tired of the thoughts and prayers uh, stuff. Like this thing uh, in uh, Belgium, Brussels, yeah, Brussels, Brussels, uh, really bad. But like the thoughts and prayers uh, hashtag, mm -hmm. it just it's hollow now. We got yeah. to come up with a new one. You know what? My heart is broken. Uh, whatever. Somebody like just hashtag thoughts and prayers. That's it makes me it, that really makes me sick. It, it's meaningless. It's completely meaningless. Yeah. And it's almost an insult to the people who, who were killed. Hashtag thoughts and prayers. Hashtag hugs and kisses. Oh, it's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Nice. But you know what I like to do after a terrorist? I like to go tango dancing. <laughs> That's what I like to do. The world is watching. I'm still going to go dancing, right? Oh, sure, we haven't canceled it. <laughs> do you see the girl you're going to be dancing with? She's fantastic. Uh, speaking of Brussels, I have a story out of Brussels. Um, organizers cancel Sunday's Brussels attacks uh, march against fear. In, Mus in Brussels, they were going to have a march against fear, and they canceled it. Due to, quote, security fears. Wow. So the March Against Fear the was canceled, canceled because, because of, of security, security fears, fears, according to uh, the AP, A AFP and the DrudgeReport.com, Yahoo News. Wow. So that's, <laughs> I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not afraid. You can't stop me. There might be some bad guys. I'm afraid. We cancels, the, we cancels the march. <laughs> Too scary. That's really Maybe bad. they need the open carry. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. Uh, what, whatever, 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 whatever. I just Dude, thought that was kind of ironic that they, and and literally in the report, it says yeah. security fears. Yes. So Hey, you know what else I want to talk about? Uh, somebody somebody just uh, sent me this tweet about the uh, the bird that landed. <laughs> the little Actually, birdie that landed. What happened? What happened? I don't know anything about this. Bernie Sanders was. My buddy, was, uh, my buddy Koch. Hey, what's up, Koch? He sent me a he sent me a text message talk about he wanted to talk about the bird. The bird landed on the podium. Okay, uh, Bernie it's Sanders. Bernie Sanders, the communist uh, socialist, candidate. Democratic socialist, right? Slash communist, right? The <laughs> Democratic socialist is communist slash by communist. vote, basically. Yeah. Oh my gosh! You know what I was just doing there? Ah, uh, it's a guy. Oh, it's um from Family Guy. Ah, uh, communist. Doesn't it kind of sound like him? It does. Oh, it's great when like an impression just happens. Yeah, Peter Griffin. Yeah, uh, communist. There it is. Boom. <laughs> Love it. Totally got it. Well, right. a so little he's, he's a little bird a comes and lands on the podium, and uh, Bernie says, "The little bird that should be a dove to say to symbolize no more wars." And I'm like, "Dude, you actually voted to fund Wait wars." Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. The guy's giving a speech. 
and a little and a bird. Hummingbird. A hummingbird. I don't know if it's a hummingbird, but some kind of bird lands oh, come on. on. Man. And he says it's the wrong kind of bird? No, he says uh, that he said something like that should be a dove symbolizing no more wars. Well, Listen, can't he just be happy that a bird landed on his podium? And that's that's kind of a very Disney thing. He funded wars. He voted to fund wars. And he's yes, saying these yes, wars are bad. Yes, Bernie Sanders is a joke. He's an absolute joke. He's a goofy dude. And his and the people that uh, I support him... I want to know what him, kind of bird it was. Are like, the wait, dumbest listen, dude, people. if I'm given a speech and a bird lands on my podium, what I'm not going to do is complain about the bird I was... No, he didn't complain. <laughs> If this bird should be a dove, that's a complaint. What? What's the exact guy, quote? Guy, I'm, that's I'm, a complaint. I'm pulling it up right now. While I'm pulling it up, I will right. say, as much as we're pretty sure Hillary is going to have the Democratic nomination. Oh, yeah, it's a lock. We should point out, mathematically, it's not a lock. He does right. have momentum on his side. He's got momentum. He won. There's a lot Alaska of stupid people. He won Alaska over the weekend. Yep. That's great. They're a state. They're not pulling this Puerto Rico junk. Alaska is all in, and they're like untouchable. They're way up in the middle of nowhere. You ever done stand up in Alaska, Jason? No, I it's wish. Great, is it? It's fantastic. Good crowds, beautiful country. Cold. I went in the summer. Beautiful. Not so cold, and the people were so happy, and they were crazy. I love the Alaskan people. They are. Just, it's a different breed of uh, person, and this is going to sound horribly sexist. This is going to sound horribly sexist, but here it goes. I'm playing this one. It's like a bar, and it's just like, dude, 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 dude. It's just like a total song. Well, the, the and, right. And this, there's not, more men than women in exactly. Alaska. It's Way like, more. Way. It's, it's, it's so then, like this girl came in who would any other club, any other club in America. She's like a, a four. four. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She comes in like a supermodel. Yep. And it, oh, and you just like it was like. And this is this is probably this part that's gonna sound sexist. I was like so happy for this girl. I'm like that's gotta that's just gotta yeah. feel great. Old ugly just gotta feel great. old ugly's getting some attention. If there was somewhere I could move, if there was somewhere like the land of Amazons or something, <laughs> where a guy like me could walk into a club and all the chicks would be like, yeah, who's that? Who's that short drink of water? Who's that kind of pudgy middle aged guy? I would go just for that experience. I would go a lot. There's there's I would places go you could go a lot. There are places with much more women than men on this planet. Where? Let's look it up. Come so, on, you so find so that. While, while I got everybody's. Up, what do you got? You got the Bernie Sanders I quote. I got the exact quote. It was a house sparrow that landed on his podium, and his line was a house sparrow. I'm no house sparrow. That bird is really a dove, asking us for world peace. Oh, that bird is really a dove asking us for world peace. No, Bernie, it's you, not a dove. You cannot vote for that man who is just like, that bird is really, no, no, it's not. It's really a house sparrow, my friend. And it just did a beautiful thing and it landed on your podium. Why don't you accept it for what, the, but the, here he is just denying reality, which is what the uh, liberals often do. And a lot of these communist people just deny reality. Com it's not really communism. It's socialism. That's not a bird. It's a dove. It's like, da, 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 da. college will be free. No one has to pay the 1%. Da, 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 da. And it always fails. Communism always fails. Michael, That's so boring. Uh, it's yeah, so it, boring that we still have to talk about Bernie Sanders. It always fails. It always fails. It drives me nuts trying to explain to him that they're it, supporting communism. It always fails. Now, what were you looking up? I uh, love this. This, this is, like is where you want to move to. You want okay. to move to Estonia. Estonia? Estonia. Um, What's that nearby? Is that like by Lithuania or something? Or, or Estonia? It's like one of those Eastern European countries, right? It, it's, yeah. I thought Western. Skype is headquartered in Estonia. Skype is? Yes. Oh, awesome. It's got the best female to male ratio. Really? Uh... But like, this is going to sound horrible, too. But this is what you do as a comedian. You make big, sweeping generalizations, and that's where the comedy is. And now we live in a culture where big, sweeping generalizations are not, they're, they're, they're frowned upon. Yes. But, like, uh, the girls that I've met from Estonia, the, the Eastern European, beautiful. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. But you get the sense that underneath that little personality is just a roar. Just a chick who's gonna steamroll. Okay, how about like this? Lying in wait, you know, like she's like, well, it'd be nice to meet you. Married, I will make you nice. We'll have some. Then you marry her, and what happens? You will clean this place. <laughs> you should repent. Well, you could go to Latvia, Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, Armenia, Lithuania, Dude, we Zimbabwe. Should, we should totally go to Latvia, and I want to get a Doctor Doom mask, right? <laughs> and just pretend like I'm looking for a new place to live, <laughs> right? Isn't that where Doctor Doom is from? Yeah, in yeah. Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, I don't know. Yeah, Zimbabwe apparently That'd be fine. That would be fine. You, dude, you would be a hot, hot thing in Zimbabwe. I would love it. You'd I be... can't. I did stand up in South Africa. 
And, uh, and I tell you what, and I, and I, I had a guy who, uh, a, a Zulu who was, said he would sponsor me to be a, a Zulu. Cause normally you have to have tribal scarring and yep. stuff, but I totally want to be a member of the Zulu nation. I think that would just be completely You're going cool. full on Kevin Bacon in the air up there. <laughs> I love that. I love that. We've got the guy on our podcast. On our podcast, we have the one guy who's seen the air up there. Kevin Bacon movie, <laughs> and he throws it out like it's so like it's so yeah. commonplace. You're going, you're going okay. full on Kevin. Like yeah. I thought, I thought that was it, right? I thought you're just going full on Kevin Bacon, and then followed with the air I'm up there, you, just like dr- <laughs> go, go go home when you're done listening to this podcast and Google Kevin Bacon in the air up there, and it is a majestic scene. Is, does he go f- Z- Zulu? Yeah, I want to be a Zulu. Well, oh, because, and here's the other thing. Okay, but go ahead, go ahead. Well, what happens in the movie is there, there's. But he's recruiting a guy to play basketball. He's recruiting a guy, but in order to get the guy, he has to help their team oh, win a basketball geez. game against another team. Right. And so he then he has learns to come an Zulu important life in lesson in order to uh, play on their team so they can win. Okay. That, so that's a horrible movie, and yeah. like I feel like I saw it when I watched the trailer. Whatever. Okay. Uh, I remember it now, right? Uh, but like, <laughs> I want to be a Zulu. And you know what else I want to do? I don't even know if it's the Zulus who do it, but like in those, you always see the like the the uh, the African dudes that like the this they're like all in a circle and they just have the spears and they're just jumping yep. straight up and down. Mm-hmm. I totally want to do that. I could do that for like hours. Right. I think that would just be like the coolest thing. You just could give, do it. Give me the skirt and a yep. spear and just just like jumping and then just kill something. Right? Eat I mean, it. Can you imagine how fired up you'd be after it's like yeah. it's got like you're just like in this hypno trance and your your adrenaline's going and you're all like moving as one. And then, just don't kill an endangered lion. Right? That's I wouldn't the do that. Thing. No. no, no, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't. What about a regular lion? Dentist. Eh. That's got to end too. I think we did that in a real Michael Topia on yeah. the, on the flip side. Like that dentist guy. Like these people who do. That's not hunting, bro. Like they right, had the thing chained to a fence, right? Murder. Dr- yes, it's full on. And like, how do you brag about that? How do you brag about that? Like, I, I don't, I don't see it at all. At, like at all. Like I, I would say, like you want to hunt, hunt a deer. Like the deer population I know in Ohio, it's really huge. Yeah. And without hunting the deer, they starve. It's bad. They go everywhere. Blah blah blah. But if you want to kill a deer, I think you have to do that with like a bow and arrow. Like we have to make this seriously. We have to make this and not some compound. My brother hunts well, with a compound bow, which is kind of like cheating. I think you have to go old school, like Cherokee, Choctaw, some kind of like Native if you're, American. If you're eating it, if you're doing it for meat, yeah, which then, is what you should be doing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it doesn't make you manly to to shoot an animal. I mean, I don't know. Okay, and the other thing that I want to do, I, I want to be a Kentucky Colonel. <laughs> you know, I want to be. What? Yes, I found this out about the Kentucky Colonels, like Colonel Sanders from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yes, it's just a club. It's there's no like military base to that. There's no. It's just a club this of guys totally who call a segment on the show who call themselves colonels. My father in law is a colonel, and what you need is you need two colonels to sponsor you to become a Kentucky Colonel. I have one. I need one more colonel. I'll do so, it. I got you. You're not a colonel. Damn it. Right? See? So if you're listening to the show in the great state of Kentucky and you happen to be a Kentucky colonel, I need you to sponsor me because I want to be a Kentucky colonel mm. and a member of the Zulu Nation. We will buy and you that... a nice bottle of Maker's Mark. <laughs> right? Yeah. Little Kentucky bourbon. There you go. All right. We got a little bit of time for some Michael Topias. Okay. Let's, let's do a couple of those. I'm going to play the theme music. I'm going to do that. I'm not afraid of this. I'm not afraid of technology. We did a couple of Michael Topias in the beginning. We're going to do a couple more now. You know what else we're going to do? We're going to get some new Michael Toby music. Because that was funny in an ironic way about a year ago. And I'm over it. It's time for Michael Topia. The world is crazy. It doesn't make sense. But in Michael Topia, it does make sense. Michael Topia, you can find it in my mind. And today, you can find it in uh, Jason Anarino's mind. You can find it in the mind of Andrew Apple as well. Guys, what do you have? What's your tips for Michael Topia? Okay, so in Michael Topia... I love that. You just like, Jason, you're sitting there. You're like, you don't know. I'm like, who's, boom, this guy. I got three. This guy right over here. Well, you waited. Andrew's like, boom, he's out of the starting gates. I love it. Well, I'm a gentleman. <laughs> and I appreciate you, Jason. Or what, what was I supposed to call you, Belgium Shorts or something? I can't remember my you were rap P-Bay name. You Nipple Butter or something. <laughs> Peter no, but yes. my original rap name was uh, Fr- uh, French uh, Montana. No, French Montana was a guy I met on the plane last night. He's I want to be French rap- Montana. There is already a French Montana. He's a well, very, he's very... He's going to have to give up that name, bro. He's a very nice guy with 2.5 okay. million Twitter followers. In Michael Topia, 
we can consider changing your name to French Montana. Thank you. That's all I ask. Yes. In Michaeltopia, Bill Clinton does not get to be a superdelegate unless someone that Bernie has slept with gets to be one, too. Is Bill Clinton a superdelegate? Yes, he is. I cry foul. That seems not right. Right? He's a superdelegate for New York. I wonder who he'll vote for. <laughs> yeah. I wonder. He's I don't know. He might not vote for <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't been loyal to her in the past, Michael, oh, if you know what I mean. Oh, I'm my just gosh. so sorry that we, we have to go back to, I to New York. I accidentally. I, I tell you what. I really, I was going to, I was, and then this other girl said she was running for president. I was like, I'll check her out for a minute. And I was like, dang, I need to vote for her. Oh, I did not like, vote for that other candidate. How much money would you give if Hillary becomes president, if there was a sex scandal, and she has to come out and be like, I did not have sex with that woman. Oh <laughs> we all know did she a, did. I did a radio interview the other day. I did a radio interview, and the guy whose radio show, complete knucklehead, just complete, this is like, you're on some like right wing radio show. This guy's just a complete goofball. Yep. Right. But I'm like, I'm laughing because I just want to see how nutty he really believes that he, he honestly believed that Hillary Clinton and Yoko Ono had an affair. Like he honestly <laughs> believes that. I think I read that somewhere. It is completely uh, a, a, a fallacy. She could destroy the <laughs> Beatles. Was, she couldn't destroy was... the Clintons. That's a bummer. <laughs> It, the thing is, if you look at Yoko Ono then versus Yoko Ono now, back then, eh, I kind of see it. Now, no. Yeah. Yoko Ono, best gold digger of all time. That was our first episode. Yeah, first but episode of this show, we talked she, about Yoko she's Ono. She's a good singer, though. And that was our Michael Topia. In Michael Topia, there's no more girls named Yoko. <laughs> If I had a time machine, right? I'd warn Paul. If I had Paul. a time machine, I'd be like, hey, with a Michael Topia. What do you got? Uh, mine is in Michael Topia, uh, you will. Lose your driver's license if you are caught texting while driving. Oh, yeah, like a mother against drunk drivers one. Well, I mean, How twice. How do you catch them? Cops catch people all the time. Yeah, yeah. texting and driving. Some in some states, How there's a law know? now. In New York, I think, or somewhere, you're not allowed to do that. They, they'll they'll arrest you. Yeah, and it's the same it's thing. It's very in dangerous. As well. Very in dangerous. California, either. Well, you're not supposed to do it. No. Twice, she I got hit get. by by girls texting, and then you know what they did. They they said it was my fault. You know what you need. You know what you need. You know one of those uh, dash cams that they're selling now on the TV. Well, I won the case, on, uh, and the girl had to pay three thousand well, dollars because you know what the judge did. He went back and looked at her text. Yeah. She's like, "Yes, Monica, I can meet you at the party. I just rear-ended this guy. I'm going to blame it on him." Sand. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Sad face emoticon, <laughs> crying face emoticon. That's evidence. That that's uh, worthy of the poop emoticon. <laughs> yeah, the stinking pile of poop emoticon. I tried to get a dirty emoticon one, and it, somebody makes them. Yep. Somebody makes them. Oh yeah, you can but that them. should just be standard with your phone. It Come on, we're all grown ups here. Well, the kids are kids with phones, Michael. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right? As I we said it, I'm like, I should, I should take that back. Here's my Michael Topia, and Michael Topia. There's no more of this. My first day in the office rhetoric. I'm sick and tired of everything. All these can my on my first day. I'm gonna. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not. So stop telling me you will. Yeah, I don't on know. My, on my first day, I will repair. Uh, I will repair. Repeal. Repeal. Uh, and Ted Ted Cruz is now going like I will repeal every syllable of Obamacare. Like really, we're down to syllables now on like, your first day. On his first day. Don't you want to just kind it of check out the White crazy. House and see what's going on? And... Ain't nothing better than repealing syllables <laughs> on your first day of mom jeans president, man. Uh, in Michael Topia, people will shut up about the polar vo vortex. It's called winter. It's called cold. There's no polar. Well, I never heard this my whole life. It's the polar vortex. <laughs> it's the cold. Shut up with your polar vortex. R when did that become a thing? I don't I know. know what you're talking about, but yeah. like it's something like I never heard until like five years no, ago. No, but they act like oh, Michael. It's it's the polar vortex. I remember being a kid. polar vortex. I remember when, being a kid. And they're like, and then a, a a cold blast is coming through. It's it's going to be a high of thirty today, but tomorrow it's going to be a high of six because we're going to get a bunch of cold air. That, I think that was the scientific term, a bunch of cold air. Yeah. But now it's a polar vortex. Right. It just sounds cooler. Yeah. You know what? You got to give it up for meteorologists. Let them have their fun. Okay. Let them come up with names for stuff like this. They get very... You ever see, like, when a when like a big storm is coming, how excited those poor guys get? 
Like their job They've is They've been so waiting boring. their whole life for this uh, There's a 30% chance of rain tomorrow, and that might not be not good for the kids' soccer game. Oh, <laughs> make sure to pack a lunch. And all of a sudden, there's a hurricane coming. They get so excited. Yes, this is big. We've got live action five weatherman down there. They love that. And then they they're need... wrong half the time. Yeah, but they need polar vortex. Okay. What do you got? You sound like you look like you're giving me the look like you got one more. I got one. Okay. In Michaeltopia, if you were the person in Arizona who decided it was a good idea to take the precincts down from 200 to 60, and then you blame the voters for How do we know? lines for showing up, <laughs> you have to resign. Yeah, she did, that was she did resign, right? Though no, she has not resigned. She's like she she went on MSNBC. She so was it. all in with Chris Hayes, and she's oh, like, I, I take responsibility for this, but I, I am not going to resign my position. Well, that's good for her. You don't have to resign every time. Uh, you know, seriously. You had listen. If you look at voter turnout, which uh, evidently she didn't. You used to have two hundred places you could yep. cast a, a vote, and yep. now you doubt you're down to sixty. Yeah. Yeah, okay. She can just, that's one where she just raises her hand and goes, my bad. You don't have to, that's, that shouldn't cost you your job. Because that's the thing, there is a follow-up, though. Okay. In Michaeltopia, <laughs> if there are still people waiting like how you in keep line it in the to framework. vote, yes. you're not allowed to call the election. Because oh yeah, they do that all the time. Though. Yeah, they got to stop that. I agree. That. That's a good Michael Tobin. We've got two percent of the vote in. It's all over. <laughs> Wait, wins. Wait, Wait what? Two percent? How do you? Yeah, but they were all. Look, man, you, let's wait for a few we more. We are projecting. Now that was a big deal uh, back uh, a couple presidential elections ago, mm-hmm. where they decided to stop it because, like, I'm in California, and they were like, "We can call it now. We can very, we can say with certainty that like two percent of the vote is in." And they, and like California hadn't even like started yeah. to vote. That yet. happened on CNN in 2008. Yeah, where the moment that the polls closed, they called it for Obama, and that was what put him over the 270. Yeah. Then he did end up winning California, but they didn't even Really? Win. Yeah. Obama won California. Jason, Obama right. won California. I don't know how that's possible. That's crazy talk. Yeah. Are we forgetting any other news? I feel bad that we didn't talk about the Arizona polling. That's important. Yeah. That is. But she shouldn't have to quit. <laughs> like, who's the guy, like, in Brussels? Some guys, like, it was my fault. I was supposed to be looking at the people coming in. I didn't look at this guy good enough, and I uh, and I, I should quit. And the, like the the king of Brussels or the prime minister or whatever says, no, you're not allowed to quit. We're at war. We need dudes like you. You're not allowed to quit, which I thought was awesome. Absolutely. That is the correct answer. You can't go, oh, this job's hard. I'm, I'm out of here. No, dude, we need you. We got to figure this junk out. Yeah. You just... Poor Brussels. Yeah. Poor Brussels. Well. Hashtag, I feel bad for you guys. But it's, it was not your fault. There was a guy, some jerk on. It was ISIS. It was ISIS. For, for Pete's sake, it was. So, yeah. so the government of Brussels and all these European nations are not in any, any way responsible for letting I, thousands of ISIS-type military-age well, men well, on, into their country? Here's who I'm not going to blame. Here's who I'm not going to blame. Anybody who's not ISIS. Yep. They're That's, leaving the borders open to have a flood of military age Islamic are, men they into are, their country. This is the whole thing. I'm not going to get They're into They're raping right their way through Europe. Literally. Says you. Here's I, here's what I here's what I say in in the perfect society, and I think this is what this is what the Europeans are thinking, right? I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not going to cast a judgment on it. In a perfect society, everybody's welcome. But when you have people who are just bent on blowing themselves innocent people up, I I blame them. I blame them ultimately. Uh, and so there was a jerk on MSNBC who was like, this is really, in a way, Brussels does bear responsibility because they're making it hard for a similar... Blah, 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 blah. And I just wanted to reach through the TV and punch the guy. Like, it's... it's, it's, it's I- so so if, if I open your front door and let a wild, rabid dog in and it bites your kid, you're going to blame the dog and not me for, for just leaving the door open and letting him in? Are no. We- no. You're close. You're close to a metaphor here. But like, you see what I'm going for? I totally see what you're going for. Uh, and this is a subject for another day. I don't know how comedy funny it is, really. Uh, yeah, like I go to an old yeller thing. You got to kill the dog, but maybe it's a dog I raised from a pup and it had been bitten by a raccoon or something. And I'm like, it's going to bite my kid, but I can't do it. It's old yeller. <laughs> and whatever. You know what? In Michael Topia, ha, ha, ha. This is a great save. In Michael Topia, there has to be sad kids movies again, right? When I was a little kid, and they would show these on Saturday afternoons, old yeller. E.T. I cried my eyes out. I tell you what, but in E.T., that kid didn't have to kill E.T. There was like That's true. It would have been a great movie if he had, though. <laughs> Sorry, E.T. We right. There's a 1% movie, chance that you might... It was called Independence Day, and it was awesome. Yeah. 
But like, there was this movie called The Yearling about this kid who uh, was raising a deer, you know, mm -hmm. and then the deer was getting into the crops, and and like Gregory Peck was a dad. And You're going to have to kill that. Yeah, he hands like an eight year old. He gives him a shotgun. You're going to have to kill that deer. No. <laughs> and the kid's crying. Bang, and he shoots his dad. Right. No. <laughs> oh, oh. He shoots the deer. And Old Yeller, the same thing. The dog the dog gets rabies protecting the kid. And the kid, for the benefit of the dog, has the. Has oh, the, my goodness. Right? That's like, like, and kids today. You know, like, kids can't handle it. Kids, they can't handle Dude, it. Dude, I'm a big Steinbeck. I remember. You know what? People. There's edited versions of Finding Nemo in the beginning. Spoiler alert! In the beginning of Finding Nemo, that Barracuda kills yep. the mom, yep. and people are like, "Whoa, slow down, Hollywood!" <laughs> like, what happened? Let's stop. In Michael Topia, we don't coddle the kids, and every once in a while, we just throw a curveball where uh, you know Show what? That, life that is little tough. that little kid in the movie Up, that little Boy Scout kid, he's got to kill Ed Asner. <laughs> he's got to push him out of the house. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> That would be a let's good do movie. That. Let's do that. Let's make like mo let's take modern movies and make them like tragic old kids movies, right? Like like um like uh it would be uh the race the talking race car uh cars. from Kirby cars. the Love Oh, from Cars. Cars has to put one in Tomater. Just <laughs> He's like, hey, Tomater, well, I'll tell you what, ever since I got bit by that thing, I want to kill you, I'm going to kill everybody in this town. <laughs> and the kids just have to sit there and watch Tomater die. <laughs> but it teaches the kids valuable lessons. Let's do another one. Life yeah, is kid, ugly. Yeah, the life is hard, and sometimes Tomater doesn't make it. What's another great one that uh, we could make into, like, the yearling? I mean, the easiest one in that realm? Is yeah. We just take Beauty and the Beast. Beast doesn't come back. <laughs> I never saw Beauty and the Beast. Oh, well, they're actually doing a live-action version of Emma Watson. It's going to be very fun. And Beast doesn't come back. That's it, where did Beast go? You know who does, You know where Beast went? Where? Beast went to the next episode of The Loftus Party. Oh. We had a great time. Thanks for joining us, world. In Microtopia, Beast don't come back. We will see you next week. Thank you so At much. At Flipside Loftus on Twitter. Woohoo! Five stars on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs>